Alright, so in this video we'll be looking at how we can use Blender and Comfy UI to turn grayscale renders into some concept art. I think it's a really cool way to do some look development and generate some quick ideas. So let's dive in. Alright, so this is my scene in Blender. Um, all the surfaces have a basic principle shader applied to them. And I'm also making sure I have denoising turned on so I'm getting a clean render. And I'm rendering 1920 by 1830 and I'll go into render and just say render image alright so the render is done you can see uh, it's pretty much grayscale there's a little bit of variation in color in the surfaces so that the AI has a little bit more room to play with and um, I have got kept on the lights but uh, this is all we need from blender and we'll go ahead and then save this image we'll go to image save as blender I'm just gonna save that as a PNG or we can do JPEG as well, it doesn't matter. So car tunnel, just gonna change that to JPEG, say save image, and that's it. Now let's uh, hop on to Comfy UI and see what we can do with this. Comfy UI is a node based version of Stable Diffusion, which has a huge potential as it allows us to try different workflows for image generation. Uh, the installation is pretty straightforward through this GitHub repository. Um, I will also recommend to install the manager for Comfy UI so that it's easier to install custom nodes and models. Uh, I will link some uh, videos in the description um, which will guide you through the installation process and installing nodes and models. Alright, so we are in Comfy now and you can see we have a blank canvas and uh, we can start deploying nodes. So the first thing you can do is double click and then type in load image will bring in our grayscale render so this is over here next we will what we will do is we will start generating our depth map and our uh, edge map so if you click on this image um, output and drag somewhere the empty space you can add nodes so let's search and then add um, a canny edge uh, preprocessor and I'll drag again and have a little preview for that and let's uh, run that by uh, clicking on this Q prompt button so you can see we have some edge detected in our image uh, I will reduce this a little bit reduce the high resolution a little bit so that we get a little bit more detection all right done with that so now what we'll do we'll generate our depth map drag this again and then type in depth and we'll use uh, midas depth map processor and have a little preview for that as well now if you run the prompt we should have our depth map so we're going to be using these two images to guide ai um, and tell it to do keep the composition the same and also inform it regarding the depth of the shot next we will load our control net model uh, control net is basically uh, the model which you is used to use this information and convert it into something which I can understand so let's uh, load uh, just type in control net loader and for this one i'm going to be using one of the 1256 safe tensor model and now because we have two so we have to we have to stack these um, maps so just for that let's add in a, a stacker so the stacker would take in the, our um, loader our model and we will use one of the images i'm going to use this one in the this in, this input over here and i'm going to use i'm going to copy this stacker paste it again oops i will add another stacker uh there you go and this would be stacking into there and i will connect this image to this stacker also give in the input of control net to this stacker as well 
So this forms our control net section uh, to keep things a little organized. I'm going to right click over here and then say add group. Uh, let's type in control net. I'm just going to drag that over here. Uh, it's very important to keep things uh, neat because it gets really messy really quickly. Um, so it's a good idea that you can use these groups to uh, label stuff. Uh, one more thing I need to do is um, so that I don't have to drag the output from this stack and all the way to our other nodes. What we can do is you can just drag that and um, we can add a set a node. So let's set node which will basically hold the output of this control and stack. Um, you can name it uh, whatever you want. I'm going to name this, uh, let's call it CNET stack. All right, next we will um, start loading the model, the actual model, which is going to do all the heavy lifting. So double click, type in load checkpoint. And for this one, I'm going to be using, uh, let's say, run diffusion Excel, I guess. Um, you can download these models from the internet. There's, um, I'll put links in the description to all the models available out there. Uh, so once that is loaded, uh, it's, it's a nice idea to actually set output to these as well because we're going to be using these outputs quite a lot and it's very nice to actually uh, have them in one of the set nodes. So I'm going to drag that and type in set node again. And this is our model. I'm going to do one for our clip. Let's call it clip. And also for our VAE, which is um, used to encode and decode um, latent images. We'll get that too in a second set node as well over here there's lots of terminology which is which might s sound a little absurd right now but it's uh, as you do it more you slowly starts making sense so that is our VAE all right next we'll start setting our prompts you double click and type in clip text encode this is going to be our positive, so we'll set that to green. And then this one would be our negative prompt. And we will set this one to red. And as you can see, it takes in clip uh, as an input. So we will connect these two over here. The way I understand this is um, it takes in all the clip information to encode the text of the prompt we give into an AI language or AI space. Um, so we can work that way. All right, next we need to make sure our prompts are getting influenced by our maps. So for that, we need to apply the control net to these prompts. So let's type in um, apply control net stack and feed in the positive and the negative prompt and this uh, the scene stack so we're just gonna do a get node over here and choose scene stack so that's where the get node and set nodes comes to use you very don't have to drag in the input all the way from uh, that that point to this point so it keeps things a little clean all right moving in let's put in one of the most important node is the sampler so I consider sampler almost like our render engine which takes in all the model the prompts and everything and then spits out something in the latent space uh, so we're gonna connect the positive the negative and the model let's do a get node and get our model in here all right, next we need to connect our empty latent image to our sampler so it knows the resolution now. So we're gonna type in empty latent image. We'll connect that to the latent image. 
and we can also fill our prompt so for the positive prompt I'm just gonna be using this text over here which says a beautiful image of a tunnel there's a yellow car in the foreground photorealistic cinematic and I'm just using this artist on uh, Insta Art Station and also putting in the station keyword uh, you can also put negative prompt though it's not necessary it will still run without one uh, but just in case it's okay to put one now we need to bring back our image from the latent space so we will decode it so if you type in VAE decode and I'm just gonna do a get node and get our decoder and we can just preview now alright so all done and let's run it with the default settings and let's see what we get so if you hit Q prompt so this is what we got the resolution looks like it's not right so I guess I screwed up over here so let's select the highest resolution and run that again so just on the default settings this is what we got I think looks pretty cool uh, there are a bunch of things you can actually play around with uh, but um, if you're just diving into comfy I would say steps is a good way to increase quality um, and you can also play around with the sampler so let me just increase the steps to somewhere about 40 and I'm gonna use a different sampler so you can try and test all of these but I in my experience I think this one DMPP2M is a really good one uh, you can also change the scheduler to Keras and run that again and by the way while it's running it um, uh, it stores all the images at the bottom of the screen so you can view it all right this is what we have um, looks a little better so yeah you can go around play play with the prompt uh, I'm just gonna change that to red car and run that again Alright, so now we have this, looks a little bit more cinematic, and now we have the red car. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot more you can do with Comfy, uh, with different workflows, different nodes, resampling, uh, masks. Uh, you can generate 3D masks from Blender and then use that to control specific parts of your image. Uh, I'll be putting a link to this workflow so you can download it and open in Comfy UI and follow along. Uh, but I think it's a really cool way to generate some ideas and sort of a color palette um, Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you found it interesting, please hit like share and subscribe and uh, Keep uh, following the channel for new content more AI stuff and blender stuff and uh, Thank you very much for all the support you guys have given me uh, Until next time. Cheers